Okay, everybody, this is what we're painting today. This is a pen and ink technique, and um, I just love it. So we put our pattern on here with a waterproof pen, and then we paint it in with just some light washes, layering it on till we get it to our desired uh, brightness of color. And in this video, I keep calling this light green, olive green, but it is foliage green. <laughs> So every time I say olive green, I mean foliage green. So I can't wait to paint this with you guys. Let's get started. Okay, so I've base coated my surface with a coat of multi-purpose sealer and two coats of uh, light buttermilk using a dampened two inch foam roller. I lightly transferred on my pattern lines and now I want to put some washes of color in the background. So I've got um, dried clay, burnt umber and antique gold here and I am going to, I was going to just wash a bunch of this on there but I think I'm going to side load this wash. I'm still making the paint washy by adding water to it and then I'm just going to tap some of this paint on here and take my mop brush and kind of soften out the edges out here so there's no distinction where it ends load a little bit more of that wash in my brush and put some over here and then mop brush just around the edges out here I don't want to have any hard lines where it ends so I want to kind of take care of that and I'm going to do one more think down in here. This may end up getting covered up with some if we do anything around the border when we're done. Alright, I'm going to take another one of those colors and take the antique gold wash. So all I did was add some water. I had water in my brush. I just dipped into my paint and then let the water and the paint blend out here. those outer edges. You can go into that a little bit if you feel like you've gotten your paint just a little bit darker than what you want. And then smooth out. Reload with that watery mix. I'm going to put some over here. And I think I'll put some here. We're still going to do some other stuff to the background. I just want to add, this is just putting a little bit of color into the background. All right, let me grab some burnt umber. And that wash of burnt umber. And then just put some of that in here. And don't try to fill up your whole background. That's, that's not the purpose of doing this. We're just, I've got a little hard line there. We have other stuff we're going to be doing here. This is just putting some tints into the background. And this will dry pretty quickly. And, you know, some of it may fade down in there. I kind of want to stay off of my sunflower there. Because we're going to put washes onto our sunflower. So we don't want to... Um, cover that up. So now we're going to do some fun stuff with those colors that we just washed into the background. We're going to do some fun things with those. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is take a piece of this. This is just drywall tape. It is um, adhesive on the back and you can buy it at any home improvement store. And I'm going to kind of stretch it and maybe get it to give me some different shapes in there. You know, I don't want everything to be perfect. 
or I can just pull some threads right out of it. Slide some of those threads over and get some wider areas. Or if you have a stencil that is um, similar to this, I'm going to cut that edge off because I don't want all those raggedy edges. Okay, let's just get it kind of messy looking as best you can. And then we're going to lay it on here. And let me grab a makeup sponge here. A little piece of one. And we're going to pick one of those colors of paint that we want to uh, use. I think I'm going to go into some burnt umber. Just tap a little bit of it onto that sponge. Not very much. And then just go in here and just kind of hit and miss kind of thing. Lay some of that in there. And then you can pull it up. Um, another thing that we're going to add is um, some of this. I'm just going to cut a piece off of it. Got some tape stuck on my sponges there. And then again we're just going to pick up some of this paint and brush it on here and then go onto our surface wherever we want it and put some of that texture on there I'm kind of putting it in the areas where I had this color okay then you can wipe this off that's my brush so it doesn't have paint dry in it you can wipe this off and then go with another color Or you can have multiple pieces standing by and put a little bit on there. I'll put some of this up here, over here, maybe in here, and then back to this thing. We're going to add some of these colors in here. So I've got some yellow on my brush, so I'm just going to kind of skim that over that and it will leave a little bit of texture. I think I like the makeup sponge better. So I'm going to put some down here with some, uh, I think I'm going to do burnt umber down here. A little bit on the sponge. Tap it in. Peel it off. Maybe a little bit of orange. This is dried clay, this color is over here. I want to put some of this next to our flowers. I just want you to do a, a kind of hit and miss. I don't want you to really go after it and fill it in. That's not the um, effect that we're going for. Let me get a little bit of yellow. And tap some of that in there. That had a little bit of yellow and orange in it, which is kind of fun. And then maybe a little bit of brown over here. This is so much fun. I mean, you could just really go to town doing this stuff. I think I want to use this and do another color on here. Some brown, I think. Get all that water out of my brush. Brush some on there. And if you feel like you have too much on here, just go to your paper towel and lay it on your paper towel and let some of the excess come off of it. And then go to your design. That's a little messy right there, but I think it'll be all right. A little bit too much paint on that one. I should have washed the, the yellow paint off of that. Got a little bit too much brown. 
That's the burnt umber. I'm just going to take where it's kind of thick off of there. There we go. So that's the uh, beginnings of our background and you can just keep going and do whatever you want. When we're done, we're going to come back and add some um, additional stuff on here. I think it will make it very pretty. I want it to be kind of rustic looking. So we're going to do uh, something that I don't do very often. And uh, we're going to do a pen and, and ink, only it's pen and paint. So, but it's like a pen and ink technique. We're going to use washes of color on here to um, create this sunflower and this leaf on here. So um, after you get your background, it has to be completely dry. No moisture in it at all. We're going to take a pen. Let me grab my pen. All right, so now first thing I want to mention is when you transfer on your lines, and I should have mentioned this before we added the paint, but you want to transfer them on fairly lightly because we're going to draw over them or trace over them with a pen, and we don't want to have a lot of uh, thick, uh, dark um, graphite lines on there. So you have some options here of pens that you can use. You can use a micron pen, but if you use this one, you've got to let it dry overnight before you paint on it. Um, and that's the only reason I'm not using that pen. You can use an Identa pen, but the small tip on this one is not small enough for me. It might work for some bigger detail things if I wanted bigger details, but for this project it is not going to work, but it is an excellent pen to use. But I'm going to use this uh, Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen Black number 199, which you can buy on Amazon. I think it's like 550. Um, great pen to have, so if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you getting one. If you use any other pen, like a Sharpie or something, um, it might bleed, and you might have to like set the ink first with like a light misting of, of some kind of clear coat. Um, so you know, if that's all you've got, then then that is your option. But what we're going to do is we're going to trace all of our lines. I can get my pen to work here. Okay, apparently mine is out of ink, so I'm going to have to get another one. This is the one I recommend, okay? So I am going to use the Micron pen because uh, that was my second option. And I'll just have to let this dry before I apply any paints to it. So we're going to outline, and the tip of that is messed up, so I'll grab my other one. We want to put whatever detail lines that you want in here, but we want to kind of, that's kind of dark. I don't really want it to be that dark, so let's keep it a little bit more on the lighter side, almost as if you're drawing with a pencil, and then you can put your detail lines in here as well. If you've got any particular leaf that um, you want to have a fold on it, then you can do that as well. And we will come back in when we're done and erase all of our graphite lines that we, you know, in case we don't go directly over our graphite lines, which I apparently am not doing very well then we will just erase. And this is where you can be a little bit more free-flowing with your petals and give them a little bit more movement. So like this one here comes straight out, but I think I might just kind of bend that one a little bit and bring it down. So you don't have to follow, if you, you know, drew your lines on where you are not happy with them, then this is your chance to change them and make them a little bit more flowy and airy and soft. And we'll just do this all the way around. all of our petals.
once you get going it should go pretty quickly because you're basically just going over all of the lines that you transferred so that's one connects to this one so you can kind of see that one goes underneath it's that one right there let mine dry after I get every single line on here that I want. So you don't want to have to come back later and add extra lines in here. So make sure you get all of the lines that you want. We'll let it dry and then we'll come back in and erase graphite lines. I think I might give that one a little bit of a turn there. Maybe I'll just have it have a folded edge. Why not? I can. It's my painting. And then these are some of the kind of calyxy leaves here. Here it comes. I'm not really sure what that line is that I drew there. And then our center here, I'm just going to kind of hit and miss, kind of wavy line here. And then put some detail by making some like comma strokes or backward C's. We don't want to fill in the whole thing so we're going to keep some of these lines more up on that edge. And maybe do a few more out here. Maybe some bigger ones. And then the leaf has some unique veins on it. So we'll have our center vein, which will go down the center of our sunflower. And then the veins that start on this piece come from way back here at the base of the stem. And so we're just going to add some like viney, tree trunky type of, or tree lemmy kind of veins on here. Some of these we won't see at all. And then we'll just keep them coming straight across from each other. I can tell where I left mine off at. Can't really tell. I've got one here. So we'll just do it that way. And give it some some cool texture going on and that's going to be all of our lining detail so hopefully that's going to be dark enough for our colors on here we're going to let it dry and come back and erase all of our graphite lines I really had wished that this pen would have worked but I think it's just completely out of ink. All right, let's get this dry. All right, so we're going to begin painting on this. 
And we're going to, I'm going to use a flat brush, but you can certainly use an angle brush or whatever kind of brush that you like to use. I'm using a 10 flat. I'm going to load a little bit of antique gold here on the corner of my brush, but I've got lots of water. So I'm working that paint into my brush with the water to create a sheer color. Uh, it's very, very washy, like a wash, but I don't have uh, tons of water and stuff in my brush. So we're just going to start painting in a few of these. Now, any place that you want to have a highlight, we're going to come back and add deeper colors, but uh, we want to start out really light here. Any place that you want to have a highlight, do not put any paint in that area. Spritz your palette with water so you can pick up water every time you load your brush with paint. You want to load it with water and blend the two. Work them together. Try and stay off my other ones because I might want to highlight there. So we're just kind of doing some uh, of the darker areas in here. We're doing all the ones behind first. Water and paint, work them together, get them a nice light color. up on the very tip of my brush here get into that little tight place there so right now it's just some sheer color water and just a tiny bit of paint work them both into your brush you're still keeping the paint on this edge you're not letting the, the paint work its way across your brush I'm just concentrating on the ones that are behind another petal. And this is all green stuff right here, so we don't have to do anything to it right now. Let's see if we to do this a little bit. So you can kind of see how sheer our colors are. Okay, so now we're going to work our way around. This one is behind, that little bit of it is behind. And we'll just put a little bit of this washy color in where, you know, another petal is behind one. And you can determine, however you drew yours, what is behind what. of all of them, the ones that are left, just down here where they connect to the sunflower itself. And it's just a wash, so bit of color. Don't get carried away. Alright, let's come in and darken. 
with that same color so we're going to apply a second sheer wash on here You don't want this too dark at first. We want to build up to it, so. All the ones that are kind of behind something. This is just still a sheer color, but we're applying a second layer, so it's um, a little bit, it's making it darker this whole leaf right here a lot of it's going to be dark and then we can go in and do the centers of the ones that we just did the centers on so you can kind of work your way around Kind of see where you've been because the, the ones that you have done a second time will definitely be darker. This little guy back here is going to be darker. Kind of look back at it and see if you've missed any. A little bit of dark color right there. And that's our second layer. Oh, it's looking so pretty. Okay, now we're gonna do the exact same thing with some cadmium yellow. And it's a pretty transparent color anyway, but we want it uh, mixed with that water on our brush. And I'm going to come out here and do uh, mostly the, the um, right sides. And we'll come back and repeat. I'm keeping this side light. I don't know what I want to do there yet, but I want to keep it light for my highlight. And if I change my mind, I can come back and add some paint on it. But... Um, if I paint over it, then I'll lose it. So with this color, you can just go along each one of your petals. You don't need to skip around like we were doing with the shading. Make sure you mix that water in there. should be a pretty fast little project. It's all going to depend on how dark you want yours to be. And we'll come back and repeat this. Once the first coat on here dries. So that is our first coat of cad yellow. Oh, I missed one down here. Let me grab that one. I'm 
Okay, there we go. That looks really nice. So pretty and delicate. Okay, mine's dry, so let's do this again. With that washi float. Cad yellow. Now if you want your highlight to be on the opposite side of what I do, then just make sure you adjust and apply your paint accordingly. Every time you pick up paint and water, you have to work it into your brush. If you don't want that background for your highlight, then you can just fill it in completely. You won't end up having any highlight on your petals because we don't want to come back in and add a very opaque color on here. We want to keep this transparent so we can see our ink. When you create your wash, it can go a long way on your brush. So You can also apply some of this um, gold over your, or this cad yellow over your antique gold if you want to, especially on some of your more top petals. We don't want to lose our antique gold in there, but um, we can brighten it up for sure. Just make sure your paint is transparent so it doesn't completely take over. I don't want that highlight to be quite that big on that petal, so I'm going to just fill in. Maybe just a touch of antique gold down here in this one. go in and touch up with either one of these colors that you want to. So I feel like some of my antique gold needs to be just a scooch darker in some places. Like right here. Especially where I have um, a petal that is like underneath another one. I really want that to be a deeper color. And we're still just using washes, so don't um, get carried away. We don't want any opaque colors here.
Now it needs to be darker around this particular one and down in here needs to be darker. so pretty and you can just continue to tweak this with your colors okay I got a line there so I'm just going to take it dampen my brush and take it off Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do. So we did basically two um, layers of each wash of the antique gold and the cad red or cad yellow, and then we came back and added just a little bit of antique gold in some of the really dark areas. But we still kept it a wash. So in in a few of the areas, the wash of antique gold was applied three times. Um, but I think this is looking just beautiful. Okay, so I want to carry a little bit of this dried clay color into my petals. So again, this is something you can choose not to do if you don't want to. We are still just using a wash of that color and placing it on just a few petals. But don't do them all because I'm definitely going to do into some of these darker areas and really darken. Such a fun color though. I really like this color. This is a 2018 color. Again, make sure you're keeping it a fairly thin color. We don't want to uh, let it take over. where some of these petals lay on top of each other here. And then I want a little bit at the base of this turned leaf. Okay, there we go. I didn't do them all. I did a lot of them, but I didn't do them all. So um, this is, again, where you can choose what petals that you want to put a little bit of that dried clay on. Okay, let's start working on the center here. And I have thunderstorms going on around me, so hopefully they won't get so loud that you can't hear me. Um, we're going to do some soft black in here. Um, create your sheer color of it work it into your brush we really want to start out sheer we can build our color darker when we need to and I want to keep a part of this light over here but our darkest areas are going to be over here on this edge so we're going to go around our leaves here try and stay off of your leaves with the soft black The 
this is just a little wash of color that I have side loaded so if it's easy easier for you to um, wipe my brush off and take the water edge and kind of soften that out if it's easier for you to just make a wash on your palette and then just go side load into that uh, wash you can do that I'll show you how to do that so we'll take a little bit of paint out over here and I've got water in my brush and a little bit more water and we'll just create this wash right over here now I'm going to wash my brush out lay it on a paper towel to get the excess water out of it and then I'm just going to side load into that wash then I'm going to touch my brush to my paper towel let it wick some of that out and then go paint. If When I lay it down it's a little dark just come back over to your paper towel and touch it again let it wick a little bit more out of it and that's how we're going to get our nice wash of colors. Um, now I'm going to go into some burnt umber and do the same that washy color and now I want to keep a highlight area oh, somewhere in here although I can't see it with my white pencil so I'm going to go over to that soft black that I put on you want to let your soft black kind of dry a little bit Take the water edge. I'm going to wipe my brush off and take the water edge and kind of smooth that out. So we're going to keep a little bit of a light area right there. I know right now all of it looks the same color and our soft black is dry so I'm going to go back into some soft black. I've already got that wash created there so I can just load up with it and we'll go back over here. But it's very important to make sure that the color that you put down first is dry because if it's not, you're going to lift it. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush off and then just kind of take the water edge and just kind of blend that out. Now this down here is a little bit darker than that up there. I like the darker so we'll come back and, and do that again. I'm going to clean my brush and go into some burnt umber and we'll darken up that burnt umber. So if you're painting this on like a card you can reduce this pattern and put it on a card and make a really cute card. Um, I would use watercolor paper. I'm going to wipe off and let these blend down here where they meet. So now we're starting to see a little bit more of the two colors. I think I'm going to bring the soft black up a little bit more into it when it gets dry. I'm apply another coat. So that means I'm going to put more paint in my water to darken up that wash a little bit. Okay, so my highlight area that I have right here is not light enough, so I'm just going to take my white eraser because this is just washes and we can remove that. Now we'll go back into our soft black. So you can remove that because the paint hasn't cured, plus we just have washes on here, so it's um you know very thin layer of paint keep it off of your petals I need just a little bit darker down in here up more paint with this with this layer we need it to be darker so I, I'm continually going back and adding a little bit more paint into my brush 
when it starts losing its color. here. That's our soft black wash my brush you want to make sure this edge is dry when you start going into adding your burnt umber and we will make that darker as well so the darkness of how it looks is going to be completely really up to you um, all right, I'm going to let those two kind of blend together wipe my brush off and take just the water edge and manipulate that edge a little bit where I stopped the paint. Okay, my soft black still is not dark enough, so I am going to adjust the color of it by dipping into soft black and dipping into some plantation pine and mixing them together. I want a little bit more uh, opaqueness to my paint. I've got a little bit more paint on my brush and we're really going to darken this now. And I'm doing choppy stuff here. You can make your smooth if that's the look that you prefer. But um, I want it to be more choppy. I need to mix a little bit more here. Choppy, choppy. Okay, and then you can do um, just some more burnt umber on the top edge if you want. So this will be like my third layer on here, so. out the center okay. So now we're going to move down to the leaf and the stem here. Okay, we've got some olive green and some um, plantation pine on our palette. Again, we're going to create some washes here. And um, I'm going to start with the olive green on the stem. So I'm adding some water, pulling a little bit of paint out. I'm using a round brush. We're probably only going to use a couple of brushes for this whole project. So I want to keep this lighter color. Touch, I touched my paper towel to remove some of the uh, paint off of it because I want to keep this, uh, you know, washy like we've done everything else. Okay, then I'm going to rinse my brush and go into some plantation pine. And I won't make it as watery. I'll keep it a little bit more of the color in there. We still want um, washy colors though. And I'm going to put this on this back side. I'm going to wipe my brush off and then just kind of work that down. Let them kind of blend. You can go back and pick up the, 
the olive green and we'll darken this up and then on the uh, calyx things we're going to use the plantation pine on here darken probably at the bases of these let's see I've got one up here and hard to see where I put my lines I've got this one that is coming out from down here and then I've got this one that is coming out from over here so that is the beginning of our stem and then on our leaf, we're going to take that uh, wash of olive uh, green. And I'm going to put that out here on the tip for now. When I don't want to lay as much paint in here, I always go touch my brush to my paper towel. So I'm going to wash it real quick and grab some of that plantation pine and create a wash with it. And we're going to fill in the rest of the leaf with this color. And bring those two together, kind of blend them. You want to work wet into wet there. But it's best that you start back here so you can lay the majority of your paint and water there and you can work up to that color and just very gently blend them. And then we'll get this dry and we're going to deepen just like we deepened everything else on here. Okay, we are dry with that layer so we're going to um, go back into our plantation pine. Now plantation pine is a pretty transparent color, kind of like burnt umber. So you can add a little bit more of the paint into the water mix so you can get a little bit more um, of a darker color on here and we're going to keep this darker color at the base back here just bring it up the right side just a little bit and around your um, petals kind of back here again you if, if you don't have a, enough water in your um, paint you're not going to be able to move it very quickly all right so I'm going to put just a tiny bit more paint in my brush a little bit less water and we're going to do a very light float down the back here and then at on all these calyxes we want to put some of this at the very back of these I'm going to get a tiny bit more paint in my brush so this will be more like a regular float of color here come back down the side again one more time. All right, I'm going to get a little bit of olive green wash. I'm going to make that wash and then side load my brush into it. And put some of this over here. And you can leave a lighter area on the leaf as well. Like I might keep that a little bit lighter and not Try not to add any more color into that area right there. And if the stem is dry, we can go up the other side 
of it with the olive green. And we'll get a little bit more paint on our brush and maybe do the tips of our calyx here. piece right here might have a little bit of a highlight on it. Okay, so that's dry. I'm going to go ahead and do the plantation pine. I think this time I'm going to mix a tiny little bit of uh, soft black in with it. Just darken that up. You're going to like dirty up that green. That's all you're doing. Touch my paper towel and then I'm just going to go down this back edge back here. And a little bit underneath there. And we can define a little bit more of the, the calyxes if we need to. Just do a tiny bit of this because uh, you don't want it to completely take over your calyx. Okay, just right there at the, just touch a little bit right there at the base of each one of them. Okay, I think that will finish up the stem nicely. I'm going to go back to my um, leaf here. I'm going to get some more plantation pine less water this time so you're you're basically because this is a sheer color you're basically side loading for a float so you've got uh, more paint I'm going to go along the, the center vein here and create a little bit of some definition here I'm going to go on each side of the line that I drew in there pine out here. Oops, need to shake it up. Okay, so with our plantation pine, I'm going to take it and mix a little bit of soft black with it. Just dirty up that plantation pine. And we're going to put that back here at the base of our leaf. And I'm going to work this up and around. And just a little bit around some of these leaves. Make some darker areas in here. That's that um, mix of soft black. I'm going to go down the sides of the center vein, but I'm not going to go all the way this time. And I think that will finish off our leaf. Okay, so again, if you feel like you uh, completely covered up your leaf and you wanted a little highlight in there then dampen the eraser you don't want a lot of water on here just barely damp and then just lightly erase into the area where you want that brightest highlight to be oh that's looking so pretty I love it all right I've got to get some color back in here because that's just too stark I think we might float around the entire um, sunflower. Okay, I'm just putting a very light wash of burnt umber in here and then taking the damp edge of my brush and just kind of, you know, t scoot that down in there a little bit. It was a little bit too um, white back in there for me. And maybe a little bit here. We're going to add some green into our background. So if you see any places you just want to 
scoot a little sheer color up this burnt umber into and go for it. Use your finger, the water edge, mop brush, smooth it out, bring it out. It's a very sheer color. Burnt Umber is a transparent color, so the tiniest bit of paint in your water. Okay, that looks much better. And now I think we are going to add some color around the outside border here. Okay, let's put some washes of green. We'll just use the plantation pine because it's a nice sheer color. Water, a little bit of paint, side load. And let's just put some of this color in here. Take the mop brush and fix the outer edges of that color if you want. mop brush. I removed a little bit out of that center. Not a lot. It's going to fade down in there. These two uh, areas have faded in there already. Put a little bit over here. You can just kind of, you can follow exactly where I put it or you can pick and choose where you want to put it. around the border of this and kind of soften that and barely go into the center of it and that will remove a little bit of that and I think I'll put some of it down here and some out here We're not going to do, be doing any of the uh, texture with the green. We're just putting washes of color in here. And we're going to replace mop brush around the whole border. Remember to clean your mop brush after each use. Go to a damp place on your paper towel and remove the paint and then a dry place and dry it. Otherwise you will transfer paint everywhere. The more paint you put in with your water course the darker it will be. So if you want lighter uh, colors on here then keep it light. Okay sorry I thought I had the camera rolling but I didn't. Uh, I'm floating some burnt umber just a straight float um, around my petals here and I'm going to add a little bit. This is burnt umber So 
we really want this to be in our dark areas around our petals and make sure it kind of fades away. very much burnt umber on my brush at all. And we're just kind of trying to get into the darker, the, the deeper areas. We don't necessarily have to come all the way out to the edges. So if it gets out too far, just take some of that down. If it gets too dark, take some of it down. sides on my brush so wash it out and reload it. Okay we want to go down here in this dark area. burnt umber. It's a very sheer color so just a little bit of paint on your brush. You can always come back and darken it. Water edge of your brush if you get it onto your leaves and stuff. And I'm going to come along or your petals. I have to redo that there. I just removed it. leaf. Oop, that's a lot of paint right there. We don't want that. Just take a damp brush and move it along there. I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel to get a lot of that out of there. Okay, so now we want to take a little bit of this color that we have on our brush because we don't have very much of it and we can put a little bit of this into our sunflower I'm gonna I think I'm gonna bring it around on the petals I think that would look the best so just get a float of it and we're gonna float it and go around this petal edge. 
we're going next to the center. Lay the brush down right next to the center. We're creating some of this color onto the petals. some of this stuff here. Just a little bit will do us here. And then these petals that are folded down, they need a little bit of this love of burnt umber. wash onto our leaf. Not very much. There's hardly anything in my brush. Just kind of scooch it on there and bring those colors together. Oh, that's so pretty. I'm really loving this. Okay, I let this set for a little bit and I came back to it and I really like how it turned out. I think it is just one of the cutest designs that I've done lately. And um, I had such a really fun time painting this. This is me in my zone painting glazes on things to create the depth with light layers of paint. So uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I can't wait to see what you paint with it. And you can put this on a card, you can put it on a gift bag, you can just have so much fun with this design and uh, be very creative with it. And um, it was just a blast to paint. So I hope that you like it. Give me a thumbs up if you're watching on my YouTube channel. Share my videos and leave any comments that you need to. I can't wait to see yours, you guys. Thanks so much for painting with me. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.